finally I said there was one kid, 23 years old. What does that mean? He said, well, just power it off and power it back. Oh, you start again. Thanks. Okay, good morning again. This morning I'm going to talk to you about um, musical tonality and the history of Western music. Medieval music was almost entirely church music, mostly Gregorian chant. Everyone here has heard Gregorian chant. In fact, I'm going to play a little segment for you in a second. It was 900 years of very long, not evolving music that was run by the church. And it wasn't really meant to be music. It was meant to be supporting of the church service that was run by the monks. And then, in about 1350, after these 900 years, the Renaissance happened. And I can't begin to tell you how no one can figure out how that actually happened. Renaissance was an explosion of creativity that in music produced consistent rules for how to harmonize melodies. A lot like what the structural rules of the internet did for data, voice, and video. These harmonic rules evolved over the next several musical periods, hundreds of years, but they never abandoned their history. They only evolved, just like the internet. This linked harmonic evolving structure makes it possible for a person from any time in the past 600 years to listen and relate to music from all historical periods from the Renaissance on, including you guys. Ragtime, jazz, Broadway, pop, and rock all use those exact same rules. I'm going to show you this in a second. Chordal progressions, etc. So that in a way, we are singing and playing the same stuff as Bach, Mozart, Wagner, and Stravinsky. Now, I'm going to get a little bit of grounding for your ears here. We're going to start with just a brief sample of Gregorian chant. Nine hundred years. All men, all the time. <laughs> and then, really, almost out of nowhere, the Renaissance happened and music was adopted and played and created by everyone. And this is an actual example on period instruments, which means copies of Renaissance music. historians and you get them to really admit it, no one's really quite sure. Not certainly not one single thing. So coming out of the Renaissance, I'm going to jump over two periods of music that were very important, but I don't have time. So the first period was the Baroque period, which was associated with people like Johann Sebastian Bach. He came within 50 years of the Renaissance. And then the second period was the classical music period, not classical music. And that's Mozart, Haydn, and those kinds of guys. But I want to point you to the most interesting and longest period of music, which some people argue we're still in. That's the Romantic period of music. And then the Romantic period of music started with Beethoven. Beethoven sounded a lot like Bach and Haydn and Mozart, whereas in the later part of the Romantic period, which was a couple of 150 years later, you had people that wrote music that sounded a lot like a movie score. And this was people like Richard Strauss, and uh, Gustav Mahler. And I'm going to play you one sample of that to show you how much it sounded like a movie score. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, that piece was not written for the movie. It was actually written in 1925 or 1930. So, coming out of the Romantic period, or after the Romantic period has been around a long time, and by the way, if you listen to Beethoven in this, the music gets bigger and bigger and bigger through the time period of the Romantic period. It gets more colorful, it gets louder, the orchestra gets bigger, and there was two schools of thought to decide if they'd had enough of that. And they all occurred exactly at the same time. One was the Impressionistic school of music, 
which is a lot like the Impressionistic school of art. So if you think about a Monet or a, a Van Gogh painting, there's a lot of space on that canvas, isn't there? And they do that intentionally because in the same way romantic painting had become very heavy, so they didn't like it. So they had these spaces that they put into the music and the only thing that was good about that from the perspective of the normal population is they did not abandon the tonality rules. So it was still the same chords underneath of all of that. It was very successful. The second school of thought was a contemporary music school and it, they decided they were going to rip the tonality out of existing music. They would had enough, they didn't want it anymore, so they invented a new system called the 12 tone system. And in the 12 tone system you have to play every half step of a scale before you can repeat any notes. And they do that on purpose so that you can't recognize anything that sounds tonal. This is an example of that. I know it's a real toe tapper, but I can't believe it, but somehow in 130 years it did not catch on. So, we're still stuck in the Romantic period. Now I'm going to get four of my friends to show you how much these Romantic chord changes that we hear in classical music are related to today's music. tonight, your assignment class, is to listen to the TV, go to a movie, attend a concert, and remember what you're listening to is the same stuff that was written by Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Brahms. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>